Greetings everyone, welcome back to the John Audio Tech Show. Today we have another TDA-2030A amplifier board. This one is not a kit, this one is pre-assembled. Again, it's from Banggood, as provided to me to review. Like I said, I call it as I see it, and they let me select what I want to review. And uh, as you can see here, it is very small. Each square on this little platform is one centimeter. So it, yeah, it is pretty small. I don't know if that shows up or not. But uh, interestingly, it says TDA-2030A, but it does not have a ST Microelectronics logo. I don't know if that's showing. I, yeah, it might make it show a little better there. If you get the right angle, you can see the uh, laser etch on the chip there a little better. But anyway, yeah, it doesn't say who manufactured that. So it just might be a generic clone. Look at that heat sink. Very, very tiny. It's not going to dissipate a lot of power. As a matter of fact, they say it's rated from 6 to 12 volts. So, you know, I'm not sure why they would use a TDA-2030A. That's designed to work with higher voltages. Even though it will work, it's not optimized for low voltage use, and it's not going to give you a lot of output power. So, but running it at such a low voltage, you're not going to need a big heat sink. And another thing I would say that this is really meant for 8 ohm loads only because of that small heat sink. And this output coupling capacitor is only rated 470 microfarads. So using a, uh, a 4 ohm load with this thing, you'd have a heat issue and the base would roll off because of the lower value capacitor. So yeah, I would just say run this thing at 12 volts maximum and 8 ohm load only. But I might push it a little bit. It has a 16 volt output coupling capacitor. So you can probably run it up to 16 volts since the output you know, on the positive swing it's never going to reach 16 volts. Anyway, so, okay, well, I guess the order of business now is to hook the thing up and give it a listening test. Okay, it's all hooked up. As usual, music player through the preamp. And if I don't mention it, somebody's always going to ask. No, this board doesn't really do anything. It's just mixing the stereo channels together to mono, since this is not a stereo amp using a couple resistors and have the speaker power and everything hooked up or set up 12 volts idle current is 30 milliamps amp is really quiet there's not a lot of background hiss so we'll go ahead and give you a sample here sounds fine to me it's just that when you crank it up it doesn't have a lot of volume it's very limited at lower supply voltage like I say these chips are not optimized for low supply voltage use so I, yeah I kind of wonder why they do that that music sample was lovely on the water by still eye span of course Maddie Pryor on the vocals there vocals are a little bit more forward when you uh, mix stereo to mono, anything that's present on both channels will become more forward in the mono mix. That's why um, in the recording industry, mono is handled differently than stereo. 
So I'll go ahead and do the power tests and distortion and uh, the uh, bandwidth and all that good stuff and see how it performs. Okay, as usual, I now have the 8 ohm load connected to the output with a scope connected across the load. And I'll get one power measurement and then uh, I'll repeat the rest of it off camera. Let me get this camera lined up here. Oh, are we recording? Yeah, we're recording. Okay, I got the camera straight away here. This camera shows a lot of stuff like cat hair and everything on the screen. Okay, so I have this set up already. And uh, it's like 2.56 volts RMS. I would expect the output to be around the same as before. Yeah, about 0.82 watts of output. Uh, so yeah, this thing is it's just not performing very well with uh, low supply voltages. We're not getting you know, anything what I would expect. And also I'm and another thing, I'm pretty sure these are not authentic ICs. You know, the die inside the chip is probably a fake or a counterfeit. So, you know, it's just not going to give you the real good output. Okay, so what I'll do is continue uh, getting measurements here and then we'll do some uh, frequency response and distortion tests. I'll come back with the, res the power results at the end here. Okay, I'm checking distortion at one kilohertz and like I say, you know, I have to say it in every video. I can't assume that everybody watches my videos. Um, so yeah, it is kind of repetitive. But anyway, this is the 1 kilohertz fundamental. This is the added into the original signal, pilot signal as I call it, at 4.5 kilohertz. Non-harmonically related, so it does not cover up the harmonics, so I can see them and it's one percent and being at one percent I can use that to judge how high these little uh, harmonic spikes are but really it's just noise floor so you know the amps very clean as far as that goes so I'll check at other frequencies and uh, report at the end if I see anything out of the ordinary but for now, next I'll check the frequency response. Okay, frequency response, 10 to 100 hertz. And with that small capacitor, that's 20 hertz right there. That signal's really low. With a uh, 470 microfarad coupling capacitor on the output, you know, it's, you know we're not going to get strong output until we get a higher frequency. We'll just let it ramp up here. Okay, we're getting close to 100 hertz and it's still not all the way up. So it shows you why having a larger output coupling capacitor, well, it just recycled and it didn't get up there all the way. So yeah, having a larger output coupling capacitor or using a split rail supply with uh, where you don't need any output coupling capacitor you just need a reasonably large supply uh, filter caps and you don't have that issue with the uh, frequency response rolling off at low frequencies so yeah it's not doing so hot with the frequency response okay this is the 20 to 20 kilohertz sweep you can see uh, because the frequency is so high already, it is reaching up to the graticule where I preset it. And my music player does kind of breathe a little bit. You know, it goes over and goes under a bit. That's not the amplifier, that is the music player doing that. But once we get into the higher frequencies, it is 
going to be flat. Okay, it just recycled. The frequency is flat in the upper end, but you know, 100 hertz or below, it does start rolling off again because of that small value of that coupling capacitor. And the results are in. And if I didn't mention so, I don't know how it shows on the camera, but that LED is really bright. At least it's not one of those super eye-nuking blue ones. But anyhow, here is the power test results at 8 ohms, 6 volt supply, only 100 milliwatts. At 9 volts, it was only 370 milliwatts. I'd like to see around 700 milliwatts at 9 volts. So, yeah, this thing is lagging behind, just like in the other video. And we saw that these just weren't making that much power. At 12 volts, we're still under a watt, 820 milliwatts. I tried it at 15 volts, and it did put out 1.5 watts. And you can probably get away with running it at 15 volts, just with 8 ohm loads. I didn't test with 4 ohm loads, again, because of that capacitor and the small heat sink. I wouldn't recommend 4 ohm loads with this thing. These little boards are cheap. You can get three of them for $3.45. Quiescent current, in other words, the idle current is only 30 milliamps. It had low noise. Uh, I did test the distortion at 20 hertz and at above 10 kilohertz. And no issues with distortion. So it delivers really good, clean sound. The frequency response above 100 hertz is pretty good. Again, with that little capacitor coupling the output, it's really crappy. It rolls off at below 100 hertz. So, yeah, I'm not real thrilled with this little amplifier board. And I know the person I work with from Banggood wasn't real thrilled with my last review. Probably not going to be thrilled with this review either, but... <laughs> you know, I call it as I see it. I don't really think it's that good product. You know, if, if you want to put a larger heat sink on it and put a larger cap here, run it at maybe 20 volts with an 8 ohm load, yeah, it can start getting a little more power out of the thing. You know, whatever we measured in the last video with that kit, you should expect about the same power. But as it stands, nah, it's, it's not really a good product. Well, I guess that's all I have to say on this little amp board. Thanks for watching.